All right, everybody, MC Murr here, and it is time to get down to business. It is time to take a look at the official MC Murr Sega Master System Buyer's Guide. It's a system that not everybody collects for. It's a system that has games that you may need additional information about. It was my first system, and I can tell you, it's not one to be missed. Let's take a look at the must-have games when starting your Sega Master System game collection. First up, the Taito Sword Swinging Classic, Rastan. Man, Rastan was so great, and it's a must-have for any collector. A really fun game that has its roots in the arcade, but, you know, this was the only version of it I ever knew. Fell in love with Rastan on the Master System. Such a fun game. The movement was good. The platforming was right. The weapons were cool. You had a great selection of weapons that all had different traits about them and ranges that you could pick up and kind of strategize what was best for your play style or what bosses you had lying in wait. Because you would have the adventure stage in the beginning. You'd be outside, then you'd get into the dungeon part on each level. Then you know you get the boss lying in wait for you at the end. Kind of neat, you know, and you've got all kind of traps and whatnot set throughout the dungeon that you really got to learn to maneuver around to make sure you get there in one piece. Also, there was all kind of items in this game that had different status effects, things you could pick up along the way to help Rastan out, and some even would hurt him. Just a unique game, one I always came back to for sure. Next on the list, I've had many a near panic attack playing this game, Space Harrier. Man, who didn't like Space Harrier? And you know, this is just one of those games that comes to mind when you're thinking about Sega Classics. It is a must-have for the collector. This game puts you on edge and it keeps you there. Frickin' high-paced action the whole time. And the graphics were amazing. Really shows what the console was capable of. This game is one that I've only beaten once in my life and I will cherish that memory because this one is very tough, but it is very fun. Next up, an absolute must-have for the Master System. A game that competes with The Legend of Zelda in almost every way imaginable. Golvelius, Valley of Doom. You know, while I may be alone in this opinion, I feel like Golvelius is direct competition for The Legend of Zelda. And it does a lot of things better. The graphics are just beautiful. I absolutely love the graphics in the overworld and in the dungeons. You know, you've got the whole dynamic of going into caves and purchasing things from the merchants as well as getting clues. I mean, it'd be hard to deny that Zelda was an influence for what they did with this game here. And there's a lot of grinding that has to be done for money to buy all the things you need to get through the game. You've got platforming and top-down dungeons to go through and really imaginative bosses at the end of each part of the world, which is a giant map to go through, by the way. This game is just awesome, and where it really shines to me is the soundtrack. I mean, the music in this game is really, really good. I remember getting this game and just being blown away by it. It's one that I play all the time and play all the way through all the time, and I just love it start to finish. I can't recommend this one enough. Such a fantastic piece of work. Up next, the Master System's answer to the Mario Brothers, Alex Kidd in Miracle World. The Alex Kidd franchise lost its way after Miracle World, and it didn't find it again till the Sega Genesis. But Alex Kidd and Miracle World was a masterpiece. It's a shame that the sequels weren't as good. Their problem was they tried to do something different. This game was really perfect! I mean, the graphics were gorgeous, bright and vibrant, the platforming was great, it had a money system, shops you could go into to buy weapons and vehicles like his pedal helicopter and his motorcycle. I mean, the game was great. Not to mention having to play Jenkin, which is essentially paper, rock, scissors, against the bosses and then eventually have to duke it out with them as well. This game was so unique, such a neat idea, such unique artwork, and, you know, it had depth for a platformer that Mario Brothers in its infancy just didn't have. So for its time, I think this was well ahead of its time, and it's one I highly recommend. And now, 
what is to me the best game on the console. Wonder Boy in Monsterland. If you buy one game for this system, it better be Wonder Boy in Monsterland. It is my absolute favorite. This game does nothing wrong. It can do no wrong in my eyes. It's absolutely gorgeous. Love the graphics. Love the gameplay. Everything about it. And you've got the money and shop dynamic, which to me was so important to have in any 8-bit game. It just added so much to it. And in this game, you really had to manage your money. You had to make sure you had what you needed to be able to afford the right kinds of gear as you went up through the game so you could make the right upgrades at the right time and kick the right amount of butt. I mean, Wonder Boy is fantastic. The original was fantastic, but when Hudson split with Sega, you know, Nintendo got the whole Adventure Island deal, and we were left with this, and it was such a different animal. So this is a rare instance in where a complete change of a game moving into the sequel ended up being a fantastic thing. I mean, Wonder Boy with a sword and shield? Come on with it. This was fantastic. It's a game that no matter how many times I beat it, I keep coming back for more, but to a newcomer, it has lots of challenge. There's a lot of ways this game can go, and it's a game you absolutely must play and must own. Up next, a genre-defining, mold-breaking RPG that gave birth to what is my favorite RPG franchise in history, Fantasy Star. Man, what can I say? As far as turn-based RPGs go, this is it, man. Fantasy Star is fantastic. And it gave birth to what is still my favorite RPG series out there. I mean, two was my favorite, but they were all fantastic. It really was a great example of what the system could do graphically. I mean, it was beautiful all around, but its dungeon crawling system, how smooth it looked, was really mind-blowing at the time. Not to mention that you can heal yourself with hamburgers and cola. I mean, what other game does that? The blend of futuristic, you know, laser technology and stuff with sword swinging, it was just such a unique world to roleplay in. Fantasy Star really does its own thing. And again, I mean, look at this. Look how smooth this is. I mean, all dungeon crawlers did something similar to this. You know, your bard's tales and your ultimas and whatnot. But this was such a smooth flow to it. I mean, never had, had anyone seen anything like this before. This really kicked graphical butt. And it's pricey, but you've got to have Fantasy Star in your collection. Now we may not have had Final Fantasy, and we may not have had Dragon Warrior, but we did have Miracle Warriors, Seal of the Dark Lord. Okay, so Miracle Warriors didn't have a bunch of sequels that came after it, it didn't leave some huge legacy. Uh, you know, it had a grid-based map system and turn-based combat pretty standard in RPGs. Some might even call it generic, I guess. I'm not really making a good case for it here, but it was a great looking game, and it was a huge map. So much exploration to be done, and extremely difficult. You had four playable characters, you had to go out and find them all to have a full party. You know, this is a game that you would spend hours upon hours on, and it's just one that I have fond memories of from back then. To me, any RPG in this format from that era is a must-have, and this game is no exception. I mean, just look at the map on this dadgum thing. Holy crap! That's nothing to scoff at. Good lord, man, the artwork. Points just for that. Up next, another action game with RPG elements. Definitely not to be missed. And a great soundtrack, too. Lord of the Sword. You know, I never really thought about it before, but, you know, looking at this game now, it does bear a striking resemblance to Zelda II The Adventure of Link. I really think that's what they were going for here. Graphically, this game looks good, and the map isn't huge, but it makes up for it in all the fighting you've got to do from the point A's to the point B's. Lots of towns to explore, people to talk to. 
again, it's a lot like Adventure of Link in some ways. But Lord of the Sword was a unique game. It's one you probably haven't heard much about. It had a fantastic soundtrack. In fact, I've actually learned pieces of the music from this game on guitar. Probably ought to do a video about that at some point. But this is one that you really should try. You got the whole dynamic of the bow hunting as well as the sword swinging. You know, the guy's got kind of a multifaceted attack going there. It's a game that I had fun with but never finished because it was pretty difficult as it progressed. It's one I'd like to go back to, spend a little more time on. And it's one that as a Sega Master System collector, you are going to want to have on the shelf for sure. Up next, the only way to play this one at home, and yes, I'm wearing the t-shirt, Rampage! Man, I wore Rampage out in the arcade. Always was in love with this game, and you know, the Sega Master System version was so close to what the arcade quality was. And of course, you had Ralph the Wolf as a playable character, whereas the NES version did not have him. So this was the way to play it if you had an option. And once I was able to have this in my home, I mean, that was a life changer right there. This is one you definitely gotta have. Again, it's so close to the arcade original, it's hard to even tell the difference. And Rampage, to me, had some of the most addictive gameplay of any game anywhere. Definitely a must have for the Sega Master System. Next on the list, Forget about Excite Bike, because you could be playing Enduro Racer. I mean, no disrespect, Excite Bike is a classic, and I love it, and yeah, you could make your own tracks, but it took four years to load them up, and you know, that's probably the only thing Excite Bike has on this game. This game had better graphics, and to me it was just more fun to play. It was a really fun game. And you had a money system in this game. You know, you could earn points in the races, and then in between the races, you would go to the shop and you could buy your upgrades for the bike. And these were serious upgrades. These were upgrades you could actually feel on the track. No BS. And it made me want to keep coming back to this game and playing it harder, earning more money, getting better upgrades sooner, and just doing an overall better job on the game. This is one that you don't hear about much, and if you've never played it before, you owe it to yourself to play it, and as a collector, you owe it to yourself to get yourself a complete inbox copy. Up next, an action game that's truly unique with really killer boss and mini boss battles. Really love this one, Cyborg Hunter. Man, Cyborg Hunter had really good graphics for its time. I mean, it looked good and it had such a unique setup as far as all the different gadgets you could get for your cyborg. There were different guns, different attachments, and then he had his smart bombs that he could pick up along the way. Every level had a unique map layout with an elevator system, and you know, there were things in between on the floors that would block you, there were traps, barricades. You really had to plan a route and fully explore these areas to get the items out of them that you needed, defeat all the mini bosses, and then eventually get to a boss. Cyborg Hunter was really unique. It was one of the Activision games that had the case that wasn't just a white box. So it looks kind of neat on the shelf, right next to a copy of Rampage, if you will. It's a unique game, and it's another one of those Sega games that you just don't hear much about. And I feel like a real gamer would want to try this out. Up next... Forget about Rad Racer, because you could be playing OutRun. Another fantastic Sega classic, and who didn't like OutRun? I mean, OutRun just made you want to drive, especially with that soundtrack, though. The soundtrack was fantastic. You could set your dial on the radio in the car before you took off. I mean, it had fantastic music, but fantastic gameplay, high-speed racing, and this was the Forza Horizon of the 80s, man, because it was almost open world in the sense that the road would split at the end of each level, and it would change the difficulty depending on your choice, but you could go left or right and go do a completely different path in the game each time you played. That, to me, was so neat in this game that I was racing and exploring. 
that concept was foreign to me and in that sense OutRun was ahead of its time. You absolutely must have a copy of OutRun in your Sega Master System library. If you even half liked Metroid, you have got to play Zillion. Yeah, so Zillion is just not to be missed. I mean, this is some early Tatsunoko stuff right here. If you've never seen the anime, I highly recommend it. Look it up. But man, that great artwork transfers right into this game. I mean, it had anime chicks in it. This was the 80s. It was uncommon for a game to look this good. This game had great graphics, but great gameplay too. Had a lot of similarities to Metroid in that you're trying to penetrate a planet to its core and then, you know, blow everything up. But you had to go into all these systems and input the commands you get from these canisters to get into the next room or to disable the traps or whatever, man. You had three playable characters and you had to find them as you went. And it was permadeath, you know? I mean, there were no lives in this thing. You had to take care of your characters and you had to push through. It was extremely difficult, but extremely fun. And it worked on your memory because you'd get the commands in each room and you'd have to keep those four commands in your head so you could get down to the computer and get them input. At times it was almost frustrating, but it stayed fun. And this is a game that's so challenging that even if you get really good at it, it still takes a good solid four hours to get start to finish on it. Love Zillion, man. I can't recommend it enough. Last but not least, as these are in no particular order, Black Belt. Black Belt was intensely entertaining. I mean, it was such a fun game. But it did some things that were somewhat ahead of its time, in my opinion, right down into the combat. I mean, you had this basic left to right, you know, progression, trying to beat down these enemies that hilariously explode. But then you had the mini bosses at different parts of the stages that you had to scrap with. And, you know, they were a little more challenging and had unique patterns to their fighting. And in some cases were actually pretty difficult. But, you know, then you get to the bosses and that's where this game really shines. The boss fights in this game took on a whole zoomed in look. And to me, you know, it was almost like an early version of Street Fighter 2. I mean, look at this crap, man. Look at the size that the characters become. And then the combat, you know, you got all the punches and the kicks and you got low attacks and you got jump kicks. And every one of the bosses has a unique weakness that you have to target. And then you got to center all your other attacks around that and stunning them and setting up that one attack that you need to deplete their life meter and get the win. So Black Belt was a really unique fighting game for what it was. And it's one that I enjoyed very much and would recommend to anybody that was into any kind of 8-bit gaming at all. Black Belt really hits a home run. It's even got a secret stage you can unlock if you know the code at the end. Just can't say enough good things about it. Now, are there other great games on the system? Of course there are. To me, they were all pretty great. I mean, the Master System constantly outdid itself in both graphics and sound. The games that they had that were direct competition for similar games on the NES, they just outshined the competition in almost every way imaginable. The Master System is so great and so underrated. Are you starting a Master System collection? If you are, I hope this shines some light on some games you definitely can't do without, regardless of price. Now you know what I do. I hunt my games in the wild. I pay next to nothing for my stuff. It's a little different when it comes to Master System games though. You don't just find those anywhere. I can probably count on my fingers how many times I have found Master System stuff in the wild over the years. And if you wanted to buy all this stuff at auction, just right off the bat, that's gonna be pretty pricey. Yeah, I don't know that I would do that. Now there's ways to play these games, there's ways to emulate, really see which of these you really dig the most, to see how much you just have to have some of these, but I can tell you, I can't live without any of them. And some of them individually were so moderately priced that, you know, it wouldn't hurt just to go ahead and take the plunge and buy a few of them. 
go ahead and get in there and get in on that great Sega Master System action. It's something that I just can't do enough of. It's something that I just cannot do without. It is something that I could not be more nostalgic for. I hope that you enjoyed this buyer's guide. I hope that it helped you in some way. Have you already played some of these games? Do you know about these games? What are your memories from some of these games? What did you think about this guide as a whole? Let me know in the comment section what you think about everything that you saw here today because you know that I love getting a conversation going with you right here on the MC Mer Show. I hope that you liked this video. I hope that you're going to go ahead and drop a like on this video. And if you have not already done so, I hope that you're going to subscribe to the MC Mer Show. Love to have you as part of Mer Nation. We're rising up. Lots of fun things that we're doing right here on the show. Lots of great stuff coming your way. Thanks so much for watching. MC Murr signing off for now, and I will see each and every one of you again next time.